Um, with that, I would like to recognize Mr. Higgins for uh, his five minutes of questioning. Mr. Higgins, to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, it's, it's, it's striking that we're having this hearing today. A lot has been said about Louisiana, so we're going to talk about Louisiana. Generally speaking, my colleagues in the Democratic Party, it's a broad generalization, admittedly, but I mean, the sky is blue, the grass is green. The Democrat Party is a party of attorneys, and the Republican Party is a party of businessmen. It's a, it's a general reference that when you first come to Congress, it's a pretty clear understanding. Democrats love lawsuits. Love them. Every energy project in Louisiana has got to set aside a large percentage of its projected budget to defend against lawsuits. Every pipeline, every LNG plant, every petrochemical expansion, every one of them have to set aside money. It is not all huge companies, you understand? You can, have a, you can put a small hole in the ground. It could be a, a $10, $12 million project. But a small company have to set aside, you know, a million, two million because of the toxic legal environment in Louisiana because Democrats and climate activists love to sue petrochemical projects and energy projects, including LNG plants, which represent the hope of the entire world to reduce emissions. And nowhere is it done more clean than in the United States of America. Why you got 125,000 miles of pipeline in Louisiana? Young lady, because it's Louisiana. It's where you get your energy from. It's where you get your petrochemical products from. Everything you use, everything you're wearing, your clothes, your shoes, your glasses, your phone, your iPad, the vehicle you got here in, the plane you flew here on, all of that requires petrochemical products and the energy that's drawn out of Louisiana. So yeah, we have pipelines. It's the safest means by which to transport energy product. It's safer than rail. It's safer than vehicle. It's safer than by water. And LNG, for God's sakes, the entire world has reduced emissions because of LNG projects out of Louisiana. But a Louisiana energy, a energy company cannot come into Louisiana without getting sued by the left. You talk about protests and First Amendment rights. I would like for anyone here that could define for me how it's okay to vandalize equipment on a legally operating project like a pipeline in Louisiana and say that that's all right to go and destroy equipment, vandalize equipment. That's not protest, that's against the law, and you should be arrested for that. Young lady referred to a lack of action out of the Sheriff's Department. I know that Sheriff's Department, I know those men. They're squared away. They have to deal with this stuff all the time. Climate activists causing problems. The, the workers of the contractors didn't go to your house or wherever you work and cause issues and interfere and threaten and shut down and get in the way, cause safety problems. You went there and caused those problems. I'm going to ask I'm going to ask Ms. Page. We have a witness here, it's Mr. Bash. But I'm going to ask you, Ms. Page. I'm going to give you the balance of my time. I've got 30 seconds. Explain to America why it's okay for a climate activist to break the law and vandalize equipment on a job site. You have the floor, good lady. Thank you. I think we've been focused on the critical infrastructure law's chilling impact on nonviolent protest protected by the First Amendment. 
Um, I'd also note uh, again how important it is to remember. Is vandalizing equipment what you would call nonviolent protest? Just, just, just tell us. I, I just emphasize that there are laws in all states to address that kind of conduct. And so, is it okay to arrest a climate activist if they vandalize equipment? I think our concern would be again that the. That's a non-answer. Draconian. Mr. Chairman, my time has expired. I yield.